Hello everyone. This is from inside AIML, and welcome you all into the first session of introduction to ML with Python. I can see many students inside the webinar. So let's wait for like four more minutes for everyone to join, and then we shall start the class. Till the time, you all can give me a confirmation that I'm completely audible to you in the chat box, please. Okay. Okay. Basha said yes. Hasnan said yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Let's wait for two more minutes, then we'll start it. Till the time the people are coming, let's talk about our program. As we know that Inside AIML is providing you a full well-created course with ML, with which you learn each and everything about ML, ranging from its mathematical intuition, from its coding. And along with the well-created course, you'll also be provided with the unmatched support from our side in order to help you at every step. Some of the main program that we include are the real-world projects that we will get, that will be from the industry expert, which will help you to master the top skills that the company wants. Then you'll also get the help of some technical mentors who will be focused on answering your questions and then they'll motivate you to keep you on track. You'll also have weekly mentor sessions. Like on Saturday, you'll have mentor sessions for two hours in which you can clarify your doubt and then continue your learning smoothly. You'll also get some personal career coaches and career services in which you'll have access to the career coaching websites, webinars, interview preparation, advanced resume, online professional profiles, and many more to grow your career. These are some of the few items that we're gonna provide. The more you'll stay with us, the more you'll find out that we are providing many more content and many more help in order to go for your good enough profile. So I guess everyone is joined by now. Let's start with today's session. And that is introduction to ML with Python. So. As we know that today is going to be the very first session, so it's going to be a bit simple. We will see what exactly is ML and at the very end of the session, you'll also see the coding section. As you may know, or you may think that coding can be a bit hard for machine learning. But today in the last other session, I'll show you that we can make any model really, really easily. And that's why we use Python for ML. So let's get started. First, let's see what exactly is machine learning. Machine learning is an application of artificial intelligence that provides the system the ability to automatically learn and improve from the experiences without being explicitly programmed. What exactly does it mean? It means that instead of you programming the whole logic of the program, the machine learns itself depending upon the data you provided to them. And depending upon the amount of data and the quality of the data, the machine learning model trains itself and then it can have an ability to predict the out outcome depending upon the features that you have provided. So this is the basics of machine learning. Instead of you manually coding the logic, the machine will try to find out the logic by itself depending upon the data that you provide. So that's the basic of machine learning. Now let's understand this with a really, really simple example. Just imagine you have a vendor and this is a vendor to whom you always go to buy vegetables. Now. Your mom told you to go and buy tomatoes. So you went to the vendor and to buy tomatoes. Now you have to choose the right tomatoes. Otherwise your mom is going to scold you. So you were informed that the bright red ones are the really good ones and the pale red ones are not really that good. So what will be your choice? You will try to find out the bright red ones because you know that they are the best ones. So you got the bright red ones. They were good, cool enough. Now, next day, you have to get more tomatoes, but this time your favorite vendor is out of town. Now you cannot go and follow that particular vendor to wherever he goes. So you have to go to a new vendor. So in this particular new vendor, he gets the tomatoes from somewhere else, not from this exact same place where your previous vendor gets it from. For this particular place, you made a new observation that here, the softer tomatoes are better as compared to the hard ones. So from here, you're going to buy the soft tomatoes. Next day, your mom told, okay, I do not need any tomatoes. Now I want you to buy you potatoes. If you go to the vendor again, all the knowledge that you have about the tomato is completely worthless now, because from now you have to completely start from the scratch and then learn what is the best value for the potato. What will be the best one? What is the bad one for which vendor, which one is the best for which vendor, which one is the bad. So you have to go through each and every point. So in this particular scenario, what happens is all the knowledge of tomato is completely worthless. Now you have to make completely new for potatoes. If we try to code that particular tomato scenario 
into the machine what we will write we can write that if the texture is bright and the feel is good like can say the feel is soft the tomato is fresh otherwise the tomato is not fresh so this is a simple normal code that you have typed what will happen these conditions are not only two or three they are like millions and millions that's what happens with us every day we learn a new stuff every day we come to a new conclusion and improve ourselves so it's not possible that all the conditions that you make will be completely reminded to you you take this example that you know how to ride a bicycle you don't exactly know what you are doing you know how much pressure you have to apply on one pedal how much pressure you have to apply on the other pedal and how much balance you have to maintain but you do not know any of the numerical format like where is your center of gravity how much newton force you are applying in one pedal how much newton force you are applying in other pedal when the other pedal is down how much force you have to reduce when the other pedal is up how much force you have to increase and if you are trying to speed it on how well you have to balance the center of gravity so that you don't fall out so you know all these things but you don't know the mathematical intuitions you don't know the actual value of that particular newton force or that center of gravity you just know it in this particular scenarios it's really hard for you to type even in that scenario what happens is there will be like millions and millions of codes that you have to write and that too hard coded there is a possibility that it may happen it may not happen for you the experience can be a bit different for someone else the experience can be a bit different so you are making a model completely for yourself for this scenario comes the main machine learning machine learning learns from the main example now what you give to machine learning you give the historical data and depending upon the historical data the machine tries to find its insights and then trains itself with that particular data so that in future if you give them the same kind of data it can predict the output so this is all about the basics of machine learning and how it came into existence let's see some of the machine learning features the two really important one are the detecting patterns and finding the hidden insights the data that you have for the historical ones they can give you a huge amount of data and information with this the selling that you are going on for a shop that you own for that you have the whole selling data you have to figure out like when you have to buy more stuff when you have to buy less stuff that is a really good question because if you get the answer you won't buy too much or too less of the stuff so what you can do is you can make a machine learning model and that can detect patterns on it why we are using machine learning and not ourselves because if the data is way too big even us finding the patterns in the data can be a bit difficult now imagine you have the data for 10 years now finding the patterns in the 10 years of data is like almost quite impossible for a human eye we use machine learning now machine learning can find out some hidden insights or the detecting the patterns that will help you to guess your answer or you can say predict your answer for the future the second comes hidden insights there are some information that you may not infer directly just by seeing them let's take an example in new york there was a survey happened depending upon what people buy together in a supermarket and they came up with a really weird conclusion that the people who buy wine bottles are most likely to buy children's diapers now these two subjects are completely different from each other they are not at all related but the study shows this so these are some of the hidden insights that only machine learning can find out and you being a human being will never come across this particular path these are some of the machine learning features now john has a question ml models are always used for finding the future you can say that it's most of the time used to find the feature like its future but it's not always true if you'll go for supervised learning in which you're trying to predict the outcome when a particular scenario happens then yeah you're trying to predict the future but in types like reinforcement learning or in supervised unsupervised learnings you may not find it that they are trying to find the feature or the future they are only trying to find the clusters and all so what exactly is supervised learning and supervised learning which we will see in just a minute anyone else has any question okay with the other question are there more features for machine learning yes there are many there are literally limitless number of features that machine learning has it can be detecting patterns finding the feature finding the time forecasting finding the event forecasting 
hidden insights visualization and there are many more that machine learning can do hidden insights and detecting patterns are the two most common and the most important ones now we will go through the machine learning steps that if you have to make a machine learning model what exactly you have to do the very first step is to get the data the data that you will get can be from any format and from any source it can be a word format it can be from a google form it can be images it can be pictures it can be normal text it can be a database it can be literally anything what you have to do is you have to get the data for your model after collecting the data second comes the cleaning preparation and manipulation of data let's see all three of them what exactly they are now cleaning of the data sometimes the data that you have is not always necessary now we will take this an example that if you want to build a model that can guess a person's income you should know where he's working how long he's been working what is his employment status does he have previous money with us or previous land area with us you have this kind of information but you also have informations like his phone number his address what kind of blood group he has even though these informations belong to that person only but that's not what you need you have no idea of finding out his blood group or its phone number if you want to find out how much he earns what you do is you try to remove all those features which are like not necessary for your model i'm not telling that you're going to complete it delete it from the main source only just for this particular model we do not need it so keep it aside do not delete it completely maybe in the near future for other model you may need it so we do some cleaning of the data in preparation and manipulation what you try to do is you try to make the model perfect for the training part you have to delete some of the missing values or handle it because in real world scenarios there are possibilities in which some of the values are missing like you send someone or some group of people to fill a form someone didn't fill his gender or someone didn't forgot to fill his age or something or something like that so you may get with completely empty or missing values you can do two things either delete the whole instance of the missing values or to handle it by using finding the mean or you can say the most frequent object so these are the stuff deleting works really well if the number of missing values are really less just imagine for an instance of 100 people if only two or three people or five people have some missing values deleting that five missing values won't affect your model that much but just imagine that you have 100 people's data and after that 30 to 40 people have some missing values not deleting 30 to 40 people in a data set of 100 it means you're reducing 40% of your data and that's not what you want so in this particular scenario we will try to handle that particular data by filling it with either the mean or the most frequent or many topics so this is what you do in cleaning and preparation and the manipulation of data okay show me the question the cleaning and the preparation and the manipulation is a necessary step or not cleaning preparation and manipulation is the most necessary step you can say in a machine learning model so let me tell you one thing if you are trying to build a machine learning model from scratch you will only give around 20% of the time in training your model other than that 80% will be debugging cleaning your data the whole pre processing time finding your data get the best out of your data you will give 80% of your time in that particular scenario only only 20% in the actual machine learning training because actual machine learning training is not a very hard one you just have to write two lines of code and it's completely ready so in the last of the session very end we will see how to write a machine learning code for linear regression and then you will see that to write a code of machine learning it's really really damn easy you just have to remember two or three steps and you can write any machine learning code and for the training part it's like writing exactly two lines of code to do the whole training part so yes cleaning manipulation and the preparation of data is a really important topic okay thank you we go for the training of model now what exactly is training of model taking your clean data and giving it to the machine learning model to train itself upon how exactly training happens so in the later classes we will see each and every machine learning model and how the algorithm works just behind the scene and on the top with the code also we will understand how each and every model train itself with the data given 
so that they can predict the future. This is the main step in which the machine takes the data and train itself on the given data to make a machine learning model. After training comes the testing part. Now, if you made something, you need to test it. If you made a machine learning model, you have to know that how well your machine learning model is doing. Either it's 100% accurate or like 0% accurate. It's not giving any answer right. So for that, we do the testing. We give our machine learning model some of the questions to solve for which we already know the answer of. And the machine will see the question. It will try to solve and give the answers. And then we'll compare the actual answers, which is with us, with the predicted answer given by the machine. And depending upon that, we will give them a score that, okay, our model is 75% accurate or 76% or whatever. So it comes the testing part. Then comes the fifth one that is improve. Now improve is an everlasting process. The moment you find out some shortcomings in your training model or the model, you try to improve it. And it continues till the time you're using that particular model. If it's good, you are completely satisfied, you stop the improvement. Otherwise, you continue improving and improving and improving till the time it becomes extremely well. This is about the machine learning steps. Everyone is clear by this step now. Okay, Mahesha's question. Mm, how much testing we are supposed to do? Okay, testing is not something like you try to do like very much, but it's a really important thing. What you exactly do in testing is the total amount of data that you have in a data set. You divide it into the training part and the testing part. And then you give like 80 to 90% of the data for the training. And then you just keep the 10% of the data for testing. Now, after training of that with that 90% of data, you will try to predict the accuracy of the model by that left 10%. That 10% will give you some accuracy that it may be 60, 70, 80, or maybe even 90, or maybe 99 or 90, something like that. So if you're getting an accuracy of like 97, 98, it's completely fine. Your machine learning model is doing really well. That too on the test data, because why we're using the test data to train, like test our model, not the actual data on which we trained, because there's a possibility that because the machine learning model has trained itself using that particular data, so may it may be well-versed with that particular data. So we'll try to give them a completely new data so that we'll get to know how well it can handle if they haven't been seen the data previously. That's what happens in testing. Clear? Okay. Thank you. Now let's see what are the types of machine learning present in the world. So the very first one is supervised learning. In supervised learning, the data that you use to train your model on are completely supervised and labeled like you know what exact data it is and you know what answer that you're trying to find out supervising is just take an example that you are supervising your model on how it should learn then comes the unsupervised learning in unsupervised learning you do not have a label data you have the data you know what it is but you don't know the actual answer like what trying you what you're trying to find now it's completely unsupervised and the machine will figure out what it's supposed to do. Then comes reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning in which there is no supervision, there is no data. The model tries to find out the best path or you can say the best answer by itself just by taking random decisions. That are the three different types of machine learning models. Supervised, unsupervised and reinforcement. We will see each of them one by one in a bit detail. So the very first is the supervised learning. What happens in supervised learning is we have the raw data. We'll give it to the algorithm. Now the algorithm will take that particular raw data and divide it into the training and testing data set, train itself on, and it will check that with the desired model that we out wanted, we got it or not. Now that particular model will be processed and then you may get your answer. Now, why exactly is known as supervised learning? Because you are supervising the model that how exactly you are supposed to learn because you know the question and you know the answer and you're providing them both. Now, taking this with an example that you're trying to teach a student on how to add. Now for that, you're giving them different, different additions like four plus five is nine, one plus one is two, three plus two is five and you're giving them many examples. Now, after giving them examples, the machine will learn on how to add. Now, what you will do, you will try to give them more examples for this time to test it on. 
Now you may ask the students, now what is three plus three? Now, if the model has trained very well onto the addition part, it will uh, can uh, easily say that it's three plus three, six. But what if the model has been trained really well? It may say like three plus three is equal to five. Now, because you know the actual answer, you can figure out, okay, my model has not doing really well. So you will give them more data or you may try to find some better way to train your model. You have the question, you have the answer. Supervised learning is also divided into two types. They are known as classification and regression. In classification, you try to answer in classes, discrete classes, you can see. What exactly they mean? Like you are trying to guess an answer, which are like yes or no, true or false, hot or cold, or what what is the season it is you know, that can be only one of the six seasons or do you have diabetes or not so you have yes or no questions or discrete answers that comes in classification the second part comes regression now in regression you don't find discrete classes in regression you find out a continuous value now regression example can be when you're trying to find out a person's age it can be from zero till my 150 it can be anywhere 150.1, 150.2, anything can happen. Like you're trying to find out some person's salary. Now salary can be anything. It's not like what you're trying to find out. It's actually pakka equal to the actual answer. It maybe is like with the model that you made for a particular given person, it predicted the salary is 31,000. But the actual answer should be 31,200. Now, even though they are not equal, they're like fairly close to each other. So that particular model will be considered as a good model because the error is just like $200 out of 31,000. So it's completely fine. So that's what happened in supervised learning. You have two different parts, classification and regression. Okay, one has a question. So how do we find out the error of a regression? Because classification happens for accuracy. Okay, okay, okay. So. For classification, as we all know, we can go for accuracy. How much is true, how much is false, or how much is right and how much is wrong. For regression, we can't go that. Why? Because if you're trying to find out the accuracy for a regression problem, you may find the accuracy to be completely zero. The example that we took that the actual answer was 31,200 and our predicted answer was 31,000. For accuracy, it will be considered as a false statement. Or you can say a false answer. But if you'll see the answer, they're like only 200 difference and that's not really big this much is fine for a model for regression we some go for something known as error now error is the difference between the actual answer and the predicted answer now this can give you a better answer or like you can say a better insight as compared to the accuracy because regression is not something like you go for a classes it cannot be measured in accuracy as you can see if the model's answer should be 31,000 and your model is giving 31,200, the error is 200. But if your model is giving 38,000, now the error is like 9,000 or something. So that what happens in error. You try to find out the distance between the actual and the predicted value. And that's what you try to find in regression. In the later classes, we will find out what are the different types of regression we use in order to get the answer. Okay. Now comes the second part which is unsupervised learning we have unknown output we know the training data we know what it is but we have no idea of what the output should be so in unsupervised learning we do only one thing and that is mostly clustering we give them a completely jumbled model or a jumbled data and then we let the model to cluster that jumbled data into similar types what it exactly can be you can take this an example that you have number of pictures of fruits okay you don't know how many unique types of fruits are there and how many numbers of fruits are there like you do not know there are apple bananas mangoes are there or not and if there are how many numbers you have no idea you just know that this is a picture of fruits there every kind of fruit present with this and what you are trying to do is you just want to cluster them separately that one cluster should have all the mangoes one cluster should have all the bananas one cluster should have all the apples so you give that particular completely raw data to the model now the model will try to find out 
the similarities and differences between each and every data point or each and every data instance. And what it will do is it will cluster all the data points which are similar to each other. And if the data points are not similar to each other, they'll keep it into different clusters so that a point will be really highly likely to be similar to a point in the same cluster. And it's really highly likely that a point is completely different from a point from a different cluster. So this is what an unsupervised learning is. Because why it is unsupervised learning? Because you only don't know that the actual answer is what. As I've said, you just have the raw data. You have no idea how many number of fruits are there, how many number of unique fruits are there, and how many even unique fruits are there. You don't even know like there are three types of fruits or four types of fruits or what. You have no answer at all. So you can just do the clustering. So in unsupervised learning, we cannot do the, what can you say? error checking or testing of the model. It's completely depends upon your gut that, okay, it looks like the model is good enough. It's working good. So it has to be perfect. That's what happens in unsupervised learning. Okay. So Saurav has a question. So if we do not test our model, how to find out it's the best one or not? Okay. So this is a typical question which comes for unsupervised learning. Okay, yeah, there's no option of checking your model on how good your model is in unsupervised learning. But as we know that the data that you're using, you should know a good enough information about the data. And depending upon how well you know the data, you have to get a guess that, okay, these many clusters should be there or this should be a better model. Or this can be a worse model. Now it's completely depending upon how well you know that particular domain and how well you know that particular data set. If you are good enough with the data set, you can figure out that particular model is good or bad just by looking at it. So that's what unsupervised learning is. You cannot get a perfect accuracy, but depending upon your knowledge, you can find out is it good or bad. Okay. Okay. So taking this example that similar to the fruit one, we have different kinds of people. Now what the clustering will do, it will cluster the different kinds of people together. As you can see the working class, the men and women and the formal class, they will be clustered like separately as a working class will be completely different from each other. Cluster class will be completely different from each other and a formal class will be completely different from each other. So that's what they do. You give them some normal information and depending upon that, you get some answer. Now we'll go to the next part, which is reinforcement learning. Now reinforcement learning is a very typical kind of machine learning process. In reinforcement learning, we do not even have any kind of data. We play in something like an action reward kind of game. There's, you can imagine there's just a model. That particular model will be left completely inside a wild situation. Now, depending upon what the model takes the decision, it will return it back as a reward. Now the machine will remember the reward, like what exact step he took and what reward he got. If the reward is positive, the machine will remember that, okay, the reward is positive. So I should take the step. If the reward is negative, the machine will remember that, okay, the reward is completely negative. So I should never take this particular step. That what happens in reinforcement learning. Now to understand reinforcement learning, let's take a really simple example. Just imagine that there is a baby. That particular baby wants to go to the candy box. Now in this scenario, the baby is the model. The candy box is its final goal. Okay. There can be one scenario. Scenario one, the baby started walking or crawling, whatever, and reached to the model. Or you can say reach to the goal. Now the baby is happy. The reward he got is a candy box, a positive new reward. So because it's a positive reward, the baby will remember that I'll take this particular path only to reach to that particular place because I took this part and I reached to the candy. Okay. Now there can be a second scenario. In the second scenario, the baby was going towards the candy box and he or she got stuck by the toy or anything, any obstacle in between the way. And because of it, the baby got hurt and he or she started crying. Now what? reward the baby got a negative reward because he or she got hurt. 
so the baby will try to remember that okay i took this particular way this is not a good one so i'll not take it again so this is how this is what happens in reinforcement learning the model will okay so let's see anyone has any doubts okay bushra has a doubt what is the exact difference between the supervised unsupervised and reinforcement okay so on the basic they all are machine learning models but the basic difference between the supervised unsupervised and the reinforcement are the types of data that we are using in supervised learning we have a completely labeled data you have the questions you have the answers in unsupervised you have an unlabeled data you know the questions like but you don't know the actual answers like you have the data but you don't know the actual answers for that data in un- reinforcement you do not even have a data you just completely work on the reward system so that's the basic difference between the supervised unsupervised and the reinforcement one okay okay i guess everyone is clear by now so as i've told you that you understood about the machine learning and many of you may be thinking right now also that the coding can be a bit hard but in the next class we will see that even writing a machine learning code is as easy as understanding this class it's really really easy if you have any doubt you can write ask right now or if you don't have any doubt you can just write okay in the chat box so that i'll be getting to know that everyone is clear okay okay looks like people are completely fine okay thank you bishra thank you john thank you chat okay thank you sakshi okay thanks for the session thank you vansh thanks for the appreciation bro thank you mahesh thank you shivam vansraj okay thank you guys thank you in the next one we will see how to exactly code a machine learning program okay thank you